Okay, here we go. General Motors just announced that they are only going to be able to make their trucks for about a week and then they're going to have to shut down their trucking operations, meaning their building of their trucks on the production line. We knew there's a shortage out there of these superconductor chips that all the automakers need to produce cars. But like I said in my last video about Ford here, this problem was going to come for the rest of the automakers. Now, Ford exposed themselves to being a company that built their cars with cheap supplies, depending on what type of car it is. So they get their parts from a low quality type of producer and then a high quality type of producer. Now, remember, the one that they're building these certain cars for from a low quality producer, you're paying your money out for. GM, who has been in serious trouble as an automaker here in the U.S., remember they went and got bailed out, but they also closed down Oldsmobile and Pontiac over it. Now they're only stuck with Chevy, Buick, and Cadillac and the GM version or division of their trucking and SUV producers. So here's the thing. Let's talk about the chips real quick once again. There is, due to economics, because of the pandemic and the sanctionings and the shutting down of companies, there is a low supply of these chips. Meeting due to economics, you know the old saying, low supply, high demand, mean higher prices on these chips, right? But if it was a high supply, low demand on chips, the cheaper they are. But with a computer chip, superconductor is not all that cheap, you know. But still, you're talking about the big three and the rest of the automakers around the world need these same chips. Here's one thing GM can't afford. Now that these chips got a high price on them because it's a low quantity out there, General Motors don't want to really go into some type of bidding war over chips. But they got big pockets. But do they really have deep pockets? They got big ones, but not deep. Remember, they had to go to the country, the United States uh, government, to get bailed out. And they got rid of two name brands. Whereas Ford, Ford has, was having problems with the same thing. So is Chrysler Dodge. But yet Ford was able to pull their money together on their own. See, back when I made a uh, reference when I used to work for ZF Linforder in my last video about Ford, uh, I had a, uh, we had a list of companies Ford had their interest in, like Jaguar and uh, Aston Martin. Um, it was um, Land Rover. Yeah, they had their hands in Land Rover, and they had their hands in several other Saab, and Volvo and some other companies okay all of them were import companies here's the thing especially with Jaguar now I'm gonna say this real quick not to get away from the subject but just to show you where Ford got their money Jaguar was only making cars accordingly to what Ford would allow them to make because Ford had that type of interest in there that means they had bought into a lot of their stock and they had controlling interest so Jaguar was building cars, and they weren't the best cars, but they were cars that Ford could actually outsell. But during the time when those guys needed to borrow money from the government, Jaguar's cars were actually outselling Ford's. You know, so Ford was still making their money. This thing about economics. They had interest in, they were making their money because those cars were selling better. As soon as Ford pulled out their interest in all these other automakers to save money and to reinvest in Ford, those automakers all made more money than Ford at that time. As soon as Ford let go of Jaguar, remember what happened? They redesigned their whole auto line. And you saw how beautiful those cars were and how more beautiful and slickly designed with European styling. Oh, yeah, Jaguar really stepped it up, and, man, everybody went nuts over those cars. The sports car, the, the family sedan car, oh, no, I forget the other one. But they all three sold big. So 
when Ford pulled out that controlling interest and put it back into Ford, and they took some things along from these auto automakers and applied it to their own cars. Okay, now that's far that was good as far as the looks and how they got their money, but now this is a total dif dif different situation. These are the very things that control those cars, these superconductor chips. That's why Ford, they got their money. As Lee Iacocco said, Ford is richer, GM was bigger, but Chrysler Dodge was better. Here we go. General Motors, they didn't have that controlling interest in other automakers. To save them, if they did, they never would have needed a loan. See, and to make this point even stronger, they are still not in the best condition as an automaker here in America to be trying to go into a bidding war. Volvo, as it was stated on CNN, they had the best month of their careers or their, or their, or their autom automakers history back in January. They sold way more cars than they ever had in a month, you know. That was celebrated, but now even the CEO of Volvo is looking at the same situation because they only got a week supply of those chips. Now they're going to have to take precautionary measures, plus they're going to end up in a bidding war against the big three and everybody else for these chips. And like the man said, the CEO said, there you have to look around, you're going to have to look under rocks and boulders for these chips now. And some of these chips may not be as good as the other ones. Remember I said the quality of the supplier? And due to economics, supply and demand, the supply is low and the price is going to be high for low level chips just to get the car off the production line and on a transfer to get it to the showroom floor. As if the car is going to be worth the money you're paying out. So are you getting a car with low quality? I brought that up before. This is where GM is going to face major problems. They may end up laying off way more people for just over a week because also we're dealing with this Delta strand that's getting increased with more and more cases, whether people have had the vaccination or not. This thing is going to be getting out of hand. And now you can't just stock up on these chips because it's too late. There's a low supply. That's why I said if I was the CEO of Ford and back when they announced when this um, COVID-19 was looking like it was going to start getting out of hand if it, before it got over to America that strong, I would have been stocking up no matter how much it costs to get them chips to come over. Uh, and whatever supplier I had to buy them from, I would have been stocking up on them chips left and right, buying them. You know, the other members on the board are asking, are you crazy? And I was like, hell yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. As, hey, oh, yeah, you got that right. I'm crazy for these chips because here's why. And I'm going to tell you. Number one, once again, supply and demand. If this pen thing turns into a, this epidemic turns into a pandemic and it gets to the point where we got to shut our doors for health reasons to stay alive. Guess what? The people who's producing these chips are going to be doing the same thing. Your competitors are going to have to do the same thing. Yet your competitors didn't get as many chips as we did. Because I bought a whole bunch. And guess what? I put them in a warehouse that's secured with security. I want men with guns out there securing that building. Here's the reason why. Point number two. We'll have chips to continue to make. And we can sell our cars at whatever price. You know, that's the white hat and the black hat of business here in America. And not only can we set the bar for that car. We could turn around and sell some of these chips to our competitor for high prices. Because... General Motors, they got big pockets, but they ain't as deep as they used to be. Chrysler Dodge, they're going to be needing some chips. And guess what? All the people that we had our interest in for it did, and these foreign automakers that was making more money, and then when we pulled out and make it even more, but now they need chips, guess who we're going to be selling these chips to? So, yeah, call me crazy, call me stupid, but guess what? We got chips to sell, and they got money to burn. So here, right back to General Motors, they got big pockets, but they're not deep anymore. No matter what somebody would say from General Motors, when they borrowed that money from the United States government, they told everybody, they got big pockets, but they're not deep. General Motors is going to be in dire straits, friends, from here on out. Every decision they're going to make is going to be something that's going to cause problems with layoffs. 
because they don't have what they need to produce these cars and they already got vehicles sitting out there in fields at these holding lots waiting for these chips and they end up and they're still trying to produce more cars it can only go so long before they're gonna have to lay people off to keep the keep the, the company alive and with people laid off and with this inflation getting higher can you really say that in the next five years General Motors stock is going to be doing well? Uh-uh. Think again. They say they're going to still try to kill off the Camaro to save, but they may have to get rid of other things as well. Can you say another name brand? I doubt a Chevy go anywhere. I doubt if Cadillac go anywhere. But what about Buick being sold off to oblivion? Think about it. Everyone have a wonderful day. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.